Hi everybody, uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about how to use some of the bracket-based syntax tree mechanisms. They can be really scary at first, um, but in practice, once you kind of get the basic idea of them down, uh, it becomes relatively easy to use especially relative to like dragging a bunch of things around in PowerPoint and things like that. And so your very first step is going to be to paste the sentence in there. Um, it's not going to like that because it needs to have brackets around everything. So what I'll do is I'll put a pair of brackets around it. This produces a very weird output where it thinks Maria is the type of node. And this tells us a truth about these pieces of software. Every time that you create a set of brackets, uh, the, the label for that chunk is going to be the first thing that's there. And so Maria is not the type of thing this is. This is a sentence. Uh, in Ling 101 for UCSD, we're using sentence as our top level here. Um, you may have different methods in different classes, but this is a sentence, right? And so I go on ahead and I put the very first label as S, and then the whole thing here is actually a sentence, right? So that's good. Um, we have got our very first node sort of put in there. But then what we can start doing is finding other constituents that uh, we might want to look at. So Maria here. Maria is a constituent, right? Um, but more specifically, the kind of constituent it is, is a noun phrase. And so I can go on ahead and label Maria as a noun phrase. If I want to put in that there's another level of specification, maybe we're using nbar here, what I would do is I would put a matching set of brackets on the other side, marking this as nbar. So now we have two sets of brackets on the other side of Maria because this chunk here, first you have the set of brackets that mark Maria as being an N bar, and then you have the bigger set of brackets marking it as being an N P, right? And then ultimately, if you'd like, what you can do is do a separate layer here, marking it as N at the very bottom there. You can add that in as well. And so we've fully specified that little chunk of the tree. Next up here, um, we should ask ourselves, okay, well, we've got a chunk here. And by the way, I'm right now building the tree from the top down. But you could do this from the bottom up if this is how you prefer, right? Um, but what we can do is see, like that he adopted a kitten, or adopted a kitten. That's a verb phrase. It's headed by a verb, so we can go on ahead and mark the whole thing as a VP. Nothing happened, though. Why is that? Well, it's because I need to mark the other bracket right now. So once I do that, then the entire thing is designated as a verb phrase. Great, nice, easy. But we should probably specify what liked is. And liked is in fact a verb, so I'll mark it as verb, and then I'll put a bracket on the other side. And now we see we've broken off liked. So now this, that he adopted a kitten, that's a little weird, right? So what's that whole thing? Well, according to our phrase structure rules, that is a complementizer phrase. And so I'll just put another set of brackets in there. Good. And then that actually itself is a complementizer. So I'll mark it as such. I'll put a set of brackets around it. And what you see here is I'm basically breaking the whole thing down, biting off little chunks with these brackets. Then we end up with this chunk. He adopted a kitten. And I can either kind of separate the chunk uh, and do that, or I can put the label in later on. But this is another sentence. He adopted a kitten. When I do it that way, we see that we have a second sentence inside there. Whoa, complementizer, multiple sentences? Weird. But anyways, so we now have another sentence here. Within that sentence, we have another noun phrase. And you can actually, there's no reason you need to do just one level at once. As you get fancier with it, you can start to, you know, type everything out at once. But you can then mark everything as being noun phrase and bar noun. And then this chunk here, adopted a kitten, is a verb phrase, and so I'll mark it as accordingly. Adopted, here is a verb, so I'll mark it accordingly. Bracket it off. And then in this case, we have NP goes to debt. Put a bracket in there. And then N bar, N kitten. And again, nothing's happened because I haven't yet put in the right number of things, and as a result, we end up with this, right? So this is a good way to do uh, these kinds of sentences. The question that always comes up is, well, okay, cool, that works well enough, but what about moving things around, right? Um, how about, for instance, uh, let's say that he adopted a kitten from the shelter. So I'm gonna go on ahead and I'm going to add a separate chunk in here. So I'll put from the shelter. You might be thinking, well, Will, why, didn't that show up? Well, the answer is that right now this is outside the sentence, right? Because this bracket 
corresponds to this bracket over here, the start of the sentence. So in order to pull it in at all, I would need to put it inside the enclosing bracket. But that's not right. That's not where that needs to attach. Because the adoption happened from the shelter, what we actually need to do is move this from the shelter so that it's connected to this verb phrase here, right? So what I'll do to do that is actually modify the brackets. And so what I can do is create, uh, well, one approach is just to delete a bracket, add a bracket. You can see it just moved down one. Okay, cool, I'm gonna delete another bracket and I'm gonna add another bracket. Move down again. And in this case, I think it wants to go down two levels, so I'm gonna delete bracket, bracket. I'm going to add bracket, bracket. Cool, okay, so now it's connected right at the correct level. But it's ternary branching. We don't want that, that's illegal. So what I'm gonna do actually is uh, make another set of brackets. So what I want is for there to be one verb phrase containing adopted a kitten, and I want there to be uh, another verb phrase, uh, I'm sorry, that's adopted a kitten, and then we want a prepositional phrase next to it that has from the shelter. So I'm gonna make that extra verb phrase here, and then I'm going to make its extent, that verb phrase is adopted a kitten. So I want it to start right here, and I want it to end right here. So now I've got another verb phrase. Now we have this from the shelter isolated, right? So I can do a prepositional phrase here. And now that's there. And then from there, it's sort of what we've been doing already, right? So I can mark the preposition. I can mark this whole affair as an NP. And note that it's telling me down at the bottom here how many brackets are open in which direction, right? You need to make sure that the number of open and closed brackets are matching. And then here again, I can do debt n bar, and actually, uh, since I know I need the n as well, I'll just go ahead and mark n, and then, boom, we've got that. Um, but let's see, let's uh, actually change it, the sentence one more time here, just so you get a feeling of how to move things around. So to move things around, let's say that this wasn't a kitten from the shelter, maybe it's uh, a kitten uh, with fleas. Awkward, but okay. So that's still a prepositional phrase. And what we can go ahead and do is just replace this NP here. Well, I'm sorry, replace the preposition with with, and then inside the NP we'll just have fleas. And to do that, we need N bar, and we need N. Okay, but the problem is this right now is not the right structure because this is saying he adopted a kitten and he used fleas to do it. Right? Or maybe he went to the, the shelter with fleas and adopted the kitten. So instead, I need to move this prepositional phrase down a little bit. So one approach that you can take is, again, to move the brackets. Right? So what I could do is actually delete, delete, add, add. Okay. So that kind of did what we needed. Right? That prepositional phrase now comes underneath the noun phrase. We're missing a noun phrase though, so I'm gonna to wanna to add an extra noun phrase. So I'll do NP goes here, PP. So now we have NP goes to NP, PP. Great, this is working. This is a perfectly plausible sentence, except for one issue. There's this extra verb phrase here. It's abandoned. We didn't need it after the uh, we moved the prepositional phrase, so I can just delete that verb phrase label and then add something else in here. One thing that's also worth noting about this is you can use any label you would like, right? So let's say that we had uh, a very, very strange syntax that involved adoption phrase. You can do that as well. Um, you also will get these kinds of labels here. So you'll get N1, N2, N3, N4. You can disable those if you want to for some reason, um, but that's, that's a possibility. And you can also change it so that all of the uh, all of the words end up on the sentence at the bottom there. Uh, that's a possibility. In some ways it's nice, but in other ways this is nicer too. But what you can do is move things around quite nicely and um, you can create these trees. This looks very, very complicated. And if you just stare at it, oh my God, it's complicated. But if you go at it chunk by chunk and just go, okay, I know that this next word is a V, so I'll surround it with a V and brackets. And if you just kind of bite it off in little tiny chunks, 
it can work out just fine. So hopefully this will be helpful and it'll let you better understand uh, how to use this kind of software. And uh, again, there are going to be different versions and they're going to have different syntax. Some of them are going to use parentheses rather than brackets. Uh, some of them, for instance, if you're using Qtree or Tix Qtree in LaTeX, um, you're going to have extra weirdness because there they require like dots before things and spaces after. Um, every one of these is going to act a little bit differently, but in all of the cases, you're representing constituency by putting brackets around things and then you're labeling each constituent by making that the first chunk. Hope this has been helpful and uh, have a lovely rest of your day.